What if I told you that AI hacking might not be too far away? Having technology steal data from you without humans being involved? This is a scary thought for a lot of people, and it's highly likely this will happen, and sooner than we all think. Let me tell you a story. In 2016, computer security researchers gathered at DEF CON, the world's largest hacking convention. That year, they hosted the first and only Cyber Grand Challenge. This was a hacking competition where AI systems competed to hack programs defended by other AIs. It was set up as a game. The AI that was best able to find and exploit vulnerabilities in other systems while protecting its own system from being hacked during the 10 hour competition would earn its creator a $2 million prize. The winner of this competition was an AI called Mayhem. Mayhem got dethroned the next year when entering the same event, but with humans being involved. The main point of this story is to show that currently, humans are superior hackers. But with AI improvements happening daily, this isn't likely to last very long. Bruce Schneier wrote a book called A Hacker's Mind and discusses AI hacking. This is where I get the rest of my information in the video from. In Bruce's book, he stresses the point that AIs don't think like people do. To describe an AI at the most basic level, it's just a complex software program that uses step-by-step -step procedures and algorithms to solve a defined problem, such as identifying an object in an image. The thing that makes AIs different from other programs is that the more data they get, the smarter they become, like humans do. We all know the more we do something, the better we get at it. That's how AIs are designed, to learn from experience. But unlike humans, AIs aren't constrained to norms, values, and or assumptions. This means they can create hacks that humans would never consider. Bruce offers an example of a programmer who wants his robot vacuum to stop bumping into objects as it's cleaning the house. He trained the AI program running on the robot to avoid triggering the bump sensors on the front of the vacuum. You would assume that the robot would learn how to avoid objects, but no. The AI learned how to drive backwards instead. This meant that the AI technically accomplished what the programmer designed it to do, avoiding activating the bump sensor, but in such a way that it didn't fulfill his goal of avoiding objects. The thing with AI hackers is that it's not just that they are faster, or that there's more of them, they're a different animal. Bruce sees two primary ways that AI hackers pose a threat to financial, political, and social systems. The first way, an AI may be designed to find and exploit vulnerabilities in systems. For example, the developer might feed the AI all the world's tax codes and instruct it to find the most profitable loopholes. But the second threat is more concerning. Like the programmer's robot vacuum, an AI may unintentionally hack a system by finding a solution that its designers never intended. This kind of unintentional hack is especially troubling because it may occur and remain undetected. For now, these type of AI hackers are science fiction, but Bruce puts it, it's not stupid science fiction, meaning it's likely to happen soon. AI hackers don't require any breakthrough technologies. The key pieces already exist and just need someone to put them together. Bruce is unwilling to predict when the first fully automated AI hackers will be operating. But he says that will probably occur sooner than anyone thinks. He points to the example of Go. Go is a game that is described as being simpler than chess and yet more complex. Whatever that's supposed to mean. Go was a game that most experts thought AI could never master. Until DeepMind's AI beat the world's best player for the first time in 2016. The thing about AI is that it's discontinuous. It doesn't progress linearly in ways you can nicely predict. Bruce is certain that humans aren't yet equipped to handle onslaughts of AI device attacks. Software companies can rapidly develop new code to fix a vulnerability after it's discovered. But human systems change much more slowly. If we're going to survive the age of AI hackers, We'll need processes that can plug social, economic, and political loopholes as fast as AIs identify and exploit them. Bruce isn't sure how these new systems governing our lives will operate. 
but he says effective solutions will have to be fast, inclusive, transparent, and agile. Ironically, AI hackers themselves may offer the first line of defense. Although people tend to think of hacking as unethical or even criminal, hackers can also be a critical engine for progress. If a hack benefits the user of a system, that system's administrator may formally adopt and normalize the hack. Whether a hack is harmful or beneficial, it is often a matter of perspective, but every hack is critical to the evolution of a system. AI hacking is no different. Bruce says he can envision a future where AIs can make software, regulations, and other systems more hack resistant by searching for vulnerabilities before they are deployed in the real world. At its core, hacking is a balancing act. Unless we can hack the process of hacking itself, we may struggle to survive this technological future. Now, if you want to hear another interesting story, where one man hacked North Korea by himself, click the video on screen.